Hello, everyone. It's been too damn long since we've talked here. I am Stephanie Conti, and I am here with the gorgeous, the sweet, amazing, the thoughtful, the incomparable Savannah Lanause. Hello. <laughs> Happy New Hi. Year. <laughs> 2020. Yes, so by the time you are hearing this, it will be 2021. A new year, hopefully a new beginning. And less apocalypse <laughs> That's for sure. But um, how are you doing, Savannah? It's been a very, very long time. And this time I mean it. No, no it really has. It's It's been about a month. It's yeah. been about a month since we last recorded. Um, and you know what? It, I think it was a well-needed break for you and me. Because you and me both had finals. You know, just the holidays came up and everything like that. So I think it was a well-deserved break for us, you know? I I agree. But we're back and better than ever. Yes. Totally. Yeah, Savannah's flying high right now on some B12 shots, so she really, really means it. I have never felt so awake. <laughs> I, I usually, after 3 p.m., I'm constantly tired. And I'm not, first of all, I'm anemic too, so I need it. It's not like I'm just taking B12 shots. I have anemia. That's why she said two, T-O-O. Yes. So I got a double dose of B12 shots, and I've never felt better. So if you are anemic, look into it. For sure, Z's. Yeah, like, I, for me, I needed uh, B12 shots at one point. It was actually so bad where they were like, you might have to administer it your own. And I'm like, please. (laughs) <laughs> no and then I realized like no you just you have a vitamin d deficiency so then I tried going out in the sun but I don't so I'm just constantly in the state of intense anemia sadly people, but I pull through you and I both muster through it you know people don't get like anemia people think like oh you just you know your blood's a little off like no like I was always tired After, yeah everyone's like, like you just got funky blood and I'm like I am so close to dying <laughs> all the time all the time like i'm always like dude like not to be too tmi but once that once a month feminine gift comes around i go into flight or fight mode like (laughs) every time every time because it's just so intense you know we also have the mediterranean anemia so we're like we're uh, sick yeah, we have something. something called thalassemia, or as some people know call it, as I call it booties anemia because it's coolies <laughs> anemia. But so we got we have booty anemia. So we're sickly, sickly. But you know, that's what makes us close. That's what makes us. It's best funny because we're not like. I'm trying to like so we're we are not cousins via blood. Yeah, but somehow we both have the same ethnic background. Yes. As well as all the same ailments. We Maybe were... uh, Puerto Ricans and Italians was just uh, something that wasn't supposed to exist, you know? <laughs> and this is our this is our suffering from it. Yeah. Maybe it's just our punishment for being alive. <laughs> but that's oh what God. that's why we're best friends. Yes. We have oh yeah, illnesses. because Yep, people who die from thalassemia together stick together, you know? <laughs> it was a match made in heaven. It really was. It really was. Um, but so, all right, let's 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 talk about the movie world. So we've, we've kind of been out of the game for a little bit. We haven't been doing reviews and stuff. Although, I will say, not to to our own horn or anything, I do think for the amount of time we've been doing Purple Noon, we've gotten through quite quite a good amount of movies you know well remember we were like uh, cranking out like three a week at one oh point. yes in the summer the summer of 2020 we were busting our chops for purple noon yeah um and with that being said this episode is going to be our little like 2020 recap if you will so unfortunately due to um you know miss covid um we could not attend to see all the movies that we wanted to. So we're going to be doing our 2020 recap 
based on what we reviewed. Maybe some other things that we didn't review, like TV shows and things like that. But we're just going to be talking about some of our favorite stuff that we watched in 2020. Not necessarily made in 2020, but sure. stuff that we personally watched. Yeah. It sucks because, dude, like, uh, like, I haven't seen Tenet yet. I'm going to see it tomorrow. And dude. I was like, maybe I should watch it. Maybe because I have a feeling it's going to be in my top five. But I was like, no. Dude, I, I promised saw my boyfriend I would watch it with him. The so DVD I will do came that. out yesterday. I got it. Oh, you got the DVD? I got the DVD. I got the Blu ray. I did. Ooh. If oh, you I got to get borrow it. it. Let me know. Wait, did you see it? I saw it. <gasps> okay. I don't want to know because if it's not in your top five list, then or top 10, whatever list, however number we, I think it's just going to be between five and 10, if you will. But um, if it's not on that list, then we got some talking to do. I I think we're going to have to have a, I'm not going to say anything, but I think regardless, we're going to have a, have a conversation about it. Oof, it looks like we're going to have to put some movies, <laughs> the movies that we already scheduled for January, we're going to have to put on the kibosh for a little bit while we review that stuff. All good, all good. But, um, okay. So uh, do you want to start with movies or TV shows first? Uh, I feel like TV shows would be a little easier. TV shows, yeah, let's of just let, crank get those them. out of the ways and stuff like that. Obviously, um, in terms of like shows that we did watch, we really only did one. And that show was the entire first two seasons of Twin Peaks, well, which I definitely think deserves the highlight. Yeah, it was the first time I saw all of Tw- I, I also, we have to talk about the, the newest season, but yeah, it was the first time this year I saw the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Oh. I only watched a few episodes before this year, but it was definitely worth the watch. Totally. I, I've always loved Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks, I kind of discovered. I remember like in my Tumblr days, which wasn't that long ago, probably like three years ago or something, <laughs> where I saw like stills from an episode and I was like, that's a really well done show. Like I kind of want to see it. And I remember watching it and my mom was like, Oh, yeah, like, I remember that show from the 90s, blah, 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 and we watched it, and I became hooked on it, and I love Twin Peaks. I even, fingers crossed, if um, COVID, you know, settles down at any capacity or I get vaccinated, um, I actually, we were, me and Savannah have been talking about actually going to Snoqualmie, Washington (laughs) to stay at the Great Northern Hotel, which is now known as like the Salish Lodge. That'll be a purple noon trip for sure. Oh, that will that will be a, a vlog, maybe? Oh yeah, we have to give the people a vlog at some point. A vlog. Wow. Oh my god. Are we that type of people now? Oh my god. We <laughs> We're be, vloggers. Hey, we've we've gotta, already pre-planned it. We gotta keep up with the times. We gotta keep up with the kids, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, was there any TV shows that, like, you really got hooked on this year? Like, what was it for you? We just talked about Hunters. Oh, I forgot about Hunters. With our boy, (laughs) Duncachino. Duncachino. Oh, my God. This man is a legend (laughs) in terms of cinematic history. And we just reduce him to (laughs) Duncachino every time. Every time we and Steph see him, we're just like, Duncachino. And, like... It's so embarrassing. It, this kid, he's oh literally God. the godfather. You know, like five years from now, like fingers crossed, when we're interviewing celebrities on our own show and stuff, and we have Mr. Pacino on here, you know one of us is going to slip up and is going to go, Mr. Duncachino? <laughs> no, we got to greet him with sweatshirts that say Duncachino with the Dunkin' Donuts font. Dude, he's going to think we're going to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> no that's not cool he's gonna think like i gotta go he's gonna be like where's the nearest exit i gotta leave fine we'll, we'll, we'll like okay fine. maybe but- you can have like something small like maybe wear like a little denim jacket with a dunkachino pin and he'll be like ah oh, that's cute but wearing full-fledged like matching <laughs> sweatshirts that say dunkachino surely there's gonna be repercussions for that well okay but tell me if Haley Joel Osment, if you didn't see Haley Joel Osment, you wouldn't be like AI. 
you wouldn't be like, I'm a real boy. You wouldn't do that. Well, here's the thing. Okay. And this is actually a little bit cruel for you to mention because here, Dunkachino is a little like, ha ha ha, you know, that from the Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> I have a whole mental illness surrounding <laughs> artificial intelligence and trauma <laughs> surrounding artificial intelligence. That's a whole different ball field, Savannah. But when you want to share game. When you want to share that with him. My trauma? <laughs> yes. Is Haley Joe Osment? <laughs> well, oh my well, God. Well, we're you know, yeah, I will share it. Look, here's the deal. I'm not going to share it. I might have already mentioned it once, but I'm not going to mention we, it. We again. never did the AI review. Why. The so next time know. I will mention it. Someone has to get little Haley Joe Osment on here so I can actually tell him in person. Yeah. So I think every interview like we do in the future, you know, if it happens with a celebrity, the theme just has to be like an obscure role. Dude, we gotta I swear separate to God. ourselves. Remember I told you with Matt Damon? With Matt Damon, people be like, oh my God, Goodwill Hunting. Oh my God, Bourne, Jason Bourne. I'm gonna be like, oh my God, I loved you on 30 Rock. Like a loser. <laughs> I'm going to say that to Sir Matt Damon. Yeah. Like a loser. And you know what? I'm very lucky that when I worked on Jay and Silent Bob Reboot, that his scenes were shot in California. Because I'm telling you right now, I would have made myself look like a fool. But he would have been what? like, who is this girl? Get her out. But you know what? They're always going to remember you. They will always remember us if we just, dude. Chris yeah, as the most insulting fan that they ever had an encounter with. <laughs> No, with Christian Bale, we just break out in like a Newsies choreography. How do you think he'd react? I think he'd be. But Newsies is Newsies, you know? Like that at least has some type of accolade behind it. It would be more so like um, going up to any celebrity and going, I loved you in that weird movie 43 movie. (laughs) You know? Or that would be like me going up to Tom Cruise and being like, dude, Tropic Thunder? I, I, just I mean, come on, like, that was a really great role. <laughs> he I, did. I'm, just, I'm just gonna fight for Doug Gacino. You know what? That's fine. I, I could let go of the other ones, but I feel like Doug Gacino is important to us. That's fine. But please reduce the huge logo maybe to <laughs> a small pin or a little patch. I think that would be a little bit more appropriate. Can we bring it up? Can we talk about Don Cacino or do you, you don't think? You oh, I will totally. I have no issues in this hypothetical scenario of ousting you in front of sir Duncacino and going hey this woman over here wanted to wear little <laughs> matching sweatshirts let's say Duncacino and you know what? it's gonna go one or two ways he's gonna be like glad that didn't happen or he's gonna be like he's gonna look at you and he's gonna be like look at, look at this sweet little thing the sweet little bean that's one of two things either you know the stern adult's gonna kick in him or grandpa mode is gonna turn on yeah, I can see it going both ways. 50-50, easy. 50-50, easy. Depends on the day. Depends if he's had his daily Dunkachino. <laughs> no, no, we right, make so him a Dunkachino. We, we make I, him a Dunkachino. All right, hold on. This is... Uh, are we... Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. <laughs> yes, you can make him a Dunkachino, but... Let's not get too caught up in the hypotheticals and let's go back to Hunters. True. Hunters, I thought, was an excellent show and I can't wait for season two. I'm excited. It was a really, really good show. And it really, I just feel like with a lot of, I've, we've talked about this a little bit, with a lot of movies and TV shows, we see a lot of recycling. So yeah. a similar storyline, a similar time setting. And I felt like Hunters was really original. Yeah, Hunters was definitely like a, in terms of all the shows that came out this year, it definitely stands out compared to all the other ones, you know? Like, especially like the style, the type of characters, everything. Like everything, it just stands out amongst the rest. Um, I I thought it was an excellent show. And one of the things, one of my favorite things that I always think about if I'm going to think about the show Hunters is the moment where... Oh my god! I think the actor's name is Greg. Greg Austin, maybe. Yeah. Um, and I dude, about. shotgun, singing the impossible dream while running around and firing fat slugs 
from a shotgun, I think is just, it's chef's kiss good, you know? Like, I can't think of that song or listen to that song without thinking of that immaculate scene. It was a great scene. He's a great character. I'm excited to see that specific character. Me too. So in ter- so there was, I think those were the only two TV shows we really talked about. For me, one of the biggest, because I thought it was, this was one of those things where I was like, man, like everyone's talking about it. It's probably going to be like nothing. It's probably not going to be that good because everyone's just like, oh my God, it's so great. But it actually was fantastic. And I watched it several times was Euphoria. Yeah. I thought oh. Euphoria was a great show. I... So, I like Euphoria because, so I'm not going to lie, a lot of it was a little a little too much. I was like, whoa, there are some scenes. Mm-hmm. Specifically, there was like a collage of like, you know what I'm talking about, right? Collage, collage, no, I don't know. There, there's this, Okay, it's just very graphic. A lot of the stuff is very graphic. So sometimes I'd be like, oh, no, I can't. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I, I, I think I know what you mean now. I think I know what you mean. Like, they would have, like, these collages, like, when um the character Rue was kind of going through her, her talking about yeah, a dirty little concept, you know? And I was like, whoa. But the writing on that show is fantastic. Yeah, I, it's so good. It's so, and the directing, like, that show was fantastic. I really, really liked and I really hope they continue what with what they did with the special. Yeah. Oh my I really hope like me and my mom, we watched the the first the Rue special that aired in December early this month, early in December. So I remember watching that thinking like that was a full movie. Like that was a full movie that could have won all the awards. And I really hope it does get recognition. I just thought, like, look, I think a lot of people don't like Euphoria because you could get caught in with, like, oh, my God, high school and, like, oh, my God, like, all these girls and, like, the cliches, but that's where the heart of the show is. That little short one-hour episode with just Rue and Muhammad, like, that is what the show is, and the dialogue was – there's not a lot of – shows or movies that can hold your attention with just dialogue for an hour and it did and you know what the dialogue that it had was a dialogue that hasn't really been heard before you know like it was a conversation of a very popular topic like with politics and black lives matters and everything but totally told from a almost like almost like a never before seen like third viewer you know like a third party or a third voice of reason and I thought it was absolutely excellent. Like it, it hit the like it hit everything on the nail. And that itself, like the actor who they picked and everything, like how it was just presented and how it really like reflected so much of the show, but also reflected a lot of 2020 was just stellar. I also think with um because the theme of the that episode was sobriety and addiction Mm -hmm. I will say I've I've never like seen a show really really narrow it down yeah there was one scene and like not to be controversial but I've never been like super impressed with Zendaya as an actress Mm -hmm. but there was one scene where he's just talking to her about like getting clean and like what does she want to do when she gets older and she's like I'm gonna be honest I'm not gonna make it that far and then later yeah. on, she talks about how she doesn't even want to make it that far. Yeah, and it, it's it's such, like, a rough conversation, but it's really real. Like, these are the conversations that so many people are too afraid to voice, too afraid to have, and stuff like that. Like, it really, like, even if, like, like to anyone who's listening, like, if you haven't watched the show Euphoria, honestly, and if you don't care to watch the show Euphoria just beeline straight to that one because you don't need to watch honestly you do not need to watch the show to fully grasp and appreciate what that episode is a hundred percent agreed and I think with like I said it's very different because I think with most of the shows I've watched or even tv shows I've seen about addiction 
it's usually the person hitting rock bottom and then like I, saying I need help and I'm going to get clean and I want to do this stuff. But you don't see a lot of narratives that are like, I, I don't want to. I'm fine like this. Yeah, I'm fine you dying young. see like very dire situation when it comes to drug abuse. But this is a very like, it's not dire in a way. Like it, it is obviously serious, but it's not like, you know, she's not shooting up heroin and she's in the bathroom and she's dying and she's doing a whole rec room for a dream thing. Like, no, like it's, it's toned down. And I think it shows that there's so many different levels to drug addiction. Like you have people who just use and use and use, like there's so many different types of drugs that can be abused. There's so many different types of addictions really. And everyone's addiction is totally different. So it, it did feel like a totally different perspective on addiction as well. It just felt very authentic, and I think she did a great job. I think Absolutely. she deserves hype for this, for sure. Um, in terms of other TV shows, I really didn't get – the only other thing I would highly suggest, um, and probably, like, my my last, like, favorite TV show of the year is What We Do in the Shadows. Oh, that's funny, yeah. I love that show. I can rewatch it so many times. I make so many jokes about it. Um, it's on Hulu. If you were – looking for like a really good laugh like I like more like British comedy uh tv shows like I like like the it crowd Miranda things like that I feel like since it is written by like uh, I believe it's pronounced Kai Watiti um it's written by him who has that type of flair and everything it's so good it's and I think it's um oh I can't remember the other writer's name yeah Tremaine I can't recall but it's highly, highly funny show. I totally suggest watching it if you haven't. Agreed. It's a really good laugh for sure. Um, the only other show I like binged besides like, you know, 30 Rock and all those shows would be Ozark. I really liked Ozark for a little bit. You know what I thought you were going to say? I thought you were going to say because you had made me laugh really hard during one episode because you randomly... I don't know if it was prompted or not. Oh, you the randomly crown? were like, yeah, you were like, I've been watching The Crown. They did Diana dirty. And I'm like, what's going on here? I love The Crown. The Crown's been out for years, though. So that's nothing new to me. But gotcha. still, The Crown, season four, Chef's Kiss. Still don't like the royal family. Just want to put it out there. <laughs> yeah, they that's what it was. Like, together. I have beef with the royal family. That's what you started the episode with. Yeah. So not happy with them. But watch The Crown, guys, and Ozark. Ozark is, I think, is very good. A little slow, but good. Good, 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 good. They make All Minnesota right. look like hell, though. I will say, I think that's where they do <laughs> it. Yeah, I will say, like no, my parents where's watch the Ozarks? Ozarks. Where's the Ozarks? I it's think Minnesota. it's near. It's I, near. Um, it, it feels right, though. Like it's, it might not be Minnesota, but it's probably right next to Minnesota. You know, the Ozarks. It's one of those swampy. It's states. one of the M states. You know, Missouri. No, they make Missouri look like hell. I swear. Yeah, yeah. that's where it is. But, but yeah, I, I, I haven't committed to the show, but I've seen episodes with my parents, and it's so weird for me to get into it because I love Arrested Development, as you know. Oh, and yeah. it's so weird to see, you know, Daddy Bluth in a whole new perspective, you know? It's just him, but serious drug peddler. Yeah. It's it's the same person. It's Booth. He doesn't act different, but <laughs> I think you'd like it. Okay. I'll be checking that out soon for sure. So let's talk about some of the movies um, that we reviewed this year. So... Um, how many movies do you have on your list? Because I have about five. Oh, perfect. Me too. Oh, okay. So let's start with, uh, let's do a little climb. Let's do not least favorite, but you know, let's start at five and lead up to number one. So for you, what's your number five in terms of best, one of the best films that we saw this year? Okay. So it's actually the last legitimate movie I saw in a theater, like okay. before COVID. Portrait of a Lady on Fire. You have been mentioning that to me nonstop. Okay. I have to get the criterion. Okay, so it's a slow. Slow mm -hmm. burn, very slow. I don't know if I would have finished it if I saw it at home. However, I like – the movie is very – so for me, I don't like graphic films. Mm -hmm. uh, 
sexually themed wise. I, I, it just makes me uncomfortable any type of film. Yeah. I, I'm just like, skip, don't want to see it. Yeah. The reason I really like this film is it's more, how do I put this? Uh, character based mm-hmm. and character driven more than like romance driven. I don't know if that makes sense, but basically, I really like the characters. I connected with the characters. You yeah, kind of like uh, like like Twin Peaks, how people are in it for the characters mostly, not necessarily. Yeah, I, I wasn't, and it's a very you know, it's a heartfelt film. It's it's very like. Uh, so, uh, so you know what it's about. I don't really know. I first actually thought it was is it a is it a a gay film? Yeah. Okay. Technically, yes. I always got um the favorite vibes from it. No, the favorite is a little bit more okay. crazy. It's a little bit crazy. The word I'm looking for, it is it's very uh what am I looking for? What am I looking for? What, what's that word? Where, what's the opposite of not too much? Subdued. Not subdued in a bad way. What's a, what's a Wait, good Wait, the opposite of, of not too much? So you mean like extravagant? No. What, what's another word for... Um, there's a specific word that I cannot... It's on the tip of my tongue. It's... Okay. Um, I love the film. I did. I'm, I I loved the story it was trying to tell. And I personally like realistic endings more than happy endings. Mm-hmm. Especially when it comes to like a romance plot or, or two characters. Because for me, the film was just about two characters finding themselves. Yeah. And it has one of the most beautiful endings I've ever seen. Ooh. One of my favorite endings to a movie. So... I like that it's not an extremely, like, in-your-face film. I don't think the film spoon-feeds you or makes things too obvious. The story is really compelling. The characters are great. It's it's not too graphic for those who want to dive into that genre, and I personally love the ending. Okay. Beautiful. I definitely have to check it out then. I've been meaning to, so I definitely will be adding that to my criterion list once we're done. Um, for me, um, so let me, before I lead up to like my, my number five, I do kind of have like some lesser, like kind of oh, like honorable very quick mentions. honorable, yeah, let's, let's do honorable mentions. So sure, I got I'll start. Yeah. I'm, okay. So my honorable mentions, and I'm just going to go through them quickly. Um, I put this because now I, I rewatched it again the other day and I'm just so in love with this film and we have to review it soon. And it's 1917. Oh, we never, we never saw it. Yeah. We never reviewed it, but I saw it recently. If you haven't seen it, oh my God, like it's honestly visually and in terms of storylines, like it really is just a perfect movie, you know, like it's just overall, like just such a good movie. Um, But we will be talking more about that soon. Um, I also really enjoyed doing the 12 Angry Men podcast with our, uh, with our friend, our sensei David from uh criterion reflections um you should definitely check out that episode that episode is so good um that one i put as an honorable mention because i had a really really great time talking with david about that one and in 2021 uh you guys should be expecting us to be talking with him soon um another one europa oh europa we all know i have a, a weird a weird little sadistic relationship with lars von trier Lars, I want to apologize. Please don't come after me. <laughs> That's where and I then, like off on him a little bit. Dude, so. I'm gonna hit it on a heavy note. The other honorable mention is something, and I'm, I'm not gonna get too much into it because we'll probably review sometime soon. The house that Jack built. Yeah, it's, it's so- just one of those movies where it was so shocking, but as it gone, it it's aged like a really good wine. Like you, you took a sip and you're like, that shiz is stanky. Get it away. But as like, maybe a cheese, maybe a cheese would represent that more. <laughs> like you're like, get that blue cheese out of the way. It stinks. It's vile. But then as, as time went on, you're like, it's not that stinky anymore. 
Yeah. It's pretty good. I mean. And I want more. I'm very terrified of, like, just the movie. I don't know if I, I I'll, if I watch it again, it's, it's got to be, like, 9 a.m. That'll probably right be song. during my Freak Week episode. Which <laughs> So that'll probably be during that. But that those are my little honorable mentions. Um, what are your honorable mentions? Uh, definitely the episodes we did with Sensei David. Those were always fun. Yes. Always fun. We did two episodes. We did an episode with him. That's And all the episodes are available on our Audemic Media. Um, so we did 12 Angry Men. And then we also talked about some 70s feminist films, which was really fun to do as well. Uh, yeah, it was it was a great episode. Uh, mm-hmm. In honorable mention, two honorable mentions. So one would be Tenet. Um, and I'm not going to get, get too much why. into it. Don't get too much into it. I'm but. just going to say I enjoyed my experience watching Tenet. And I enjoyed, uh, you know, I'm just going to say that. I'm just going to leave it at that. A great experience. Always a good but experience. With- I'm literally watching it tomorrow. It will probably re- record it within the next three weeks, honestly. Yes. Let's do it. I, I'm really excited to talk about it. Okay. Um, and what other honorable mentions do you have? The 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 last one, the last honorable mention I would say was the Persona episode. Oh, dude, that's my number five. Cool. We could talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. That persona for me was my number five because and, and this could be because more I think for me. It was an ep- – because not only did I really like the movie, but I think recording that episode was for me was, like, a very good reassurance to me that I kind of felt like after doing that episode – like, it was kind of like a reassurance that, like, yeah, you do have a place in talking about movies because I really, really enjoyed my theory that I had on Persona. And I like talking about it with people and people going, like, holy crap, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it just – I, that was more of like a milestone for me, like kind of like saying like, yeah, you can keep doing this. Like, you're good. You're good here. Um, but I also really enjoyed the hell out of that movie. Um, it was my honestly my first ever um, um, Bergman film that I've seen, mm-hmm. and it did not disappoint. No, it was such a fun episode to record, especially when you did your like you were saying you you made that little revelation. My big Wayne theories. Yeah. So. That's definitely a favorite of mine for sure, too. It's so good. And then also, I think it also means a little bit more, too, because when COVID does cease to a certain extent, Savannah and I always had planned to do, like, movie-themed photo shoots. And so one of the ones that we're looking forward to is recreating some stills from Persona, which I'm so excited Um to finally like start thinking like hey like 2021 that could definitely be a possibility that we do yeah I'm super excited for the we have so many good ones planned yeah so I'm excited because I think that will it'll it'll just be so much fun for us to do but I think it'll also give everyone who watches us or listens to us a really nice insight to kind of our personalities you know yes all right, so let's talk about our number four. Oh, no, so that was not my number five. What was your – oh, no, you talked about your number five. What am I doing? Yeah, yeah. Now into number four. Savannah, what is your number four seat? My number four is the episode where we talked about the swimmer and Valley of the Dolls. You know, that's a great one. I was contemplating on it. It, it probably would have been, like – if I had added one more thing to my like honorable mention, that episode would have been there. Yeah. I thought the the swimmer movie it was a what very a trip. it was a very lighthearted review. You know, we had fun. We had a good time. I also liked the movie. I thought it was an experience. You know what? And and shout out, that was actually a recommendation by a friend of mine named Connor Stevens. So shout out to Connor for giving us that really good recommendation. It's one of those films, too, that I feel like I'm looking forward to in the summer watching that film. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And overall, like you and me had already both seen Valley of the Dolls, and we both really enjoy that film already. Yeah, so that, that that overall, like the whole look and everything of the film and kind of like how we went with like, for that episode, like a 60s pop 
type of theme and stuff like that was just a really fun episode to do. Yeah, and it's Valley of the Lost was always a special one because that was something we saw early on in our friendship too. Yes. So yeah, number four episode. What was that? Thirty something. That yeah, was episode up. thirty-three. Yes, episode thirty-three was number four. Your turn. Yep. So for me, the next one I would have to say because it kind of unlocked a new. I think a new because I I'm someone who like I have an obsession with Marlon Brando. I love Marlon Brando, but there's always I enjoy like finding a specific actor that I like to kind of like unlock and go through all their things and kind of, you know, watch their movies, get to know a little bit about their history because they're just like very interesting characters. And for me, um, that character is uh, Gerard Depardieu. So <laughs> I have Under the Son of Satan oh. on the list because even though it was a film, I broke down. It, it had so many different elements that I really enjoyed. But like I said, it also just felt like a really good episode, like in terms of critique and everything. And it's just one of those things where I'm like, I look back and I don't think of Under the Son of Satan as like, oh, this is where the movie was flawed. I look at it as like, you know what? This is something I would love to remake one day. Like totally like Under the Son of Satan is something I would love to remake. Absolutely. What a, that, was a, that was a good one too. That was fun. It was so you. different. It was really, really different. And I remember it like being one of those movies where it was like, yeah, you know what? You're flawed, but you're still pretty good, though. No, I I really – it wasn't so much like, – I, I just really liked the actor. I really yeah. liked the actor. And then, like, yeah, the story was a little confusing at times. But I think once we broke it down, we were like, oh, very interesting. It, it was so – it was very, very interesting. So I – and I'm happy that – because that's not a, in the Criterion Collection, but it was on the channel for a bit. So I was really happy that I was kind of able to discover that through the channel. Shout out to the channel. Um, but it, <laughs> it was a really, really nice discovery. Because in the way that they set it up, like when I hit open like my – criterion page i remember seeing uh de Pado in like the field in like his little outfit and it just looks so and i was like whoa this looks like my kind of thing and it yeah. was and i was not disappointed well that leads me to my third pick the what was it what was it he, the other one we did with him the woman next door yes and i thought that was a great pick by you because Thank I you. enjoyed that ride completely. So, such a good movie. Such It is such a great movie. And it's actually, it's on my list. I'm not going to tell you where it is on my list yet. But you'll oh, see. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I liked, um, it was so, it, it didn't go where I thought it was going to go at all. And No. Both it was very, me. like, I've never seen a film where two people were electric and people say like oh my god they're electric they have chemistry but no this was like an electric where it's like someone's gonna get burned and it was really like invigorating to watch it was like saucy but it was well done you know it wasn't cheesy in my opinion it was just it, it was just from the get-go like I liked how these two people locked eyes and was like we're gonna get funky right we're gonna do some messed up stuff right yeah and they just did there's just so there was just so many aspects to the movie where you could analyze you can analyze yeah. their partners what the what was going on there you can analyze why they live next door and they chose to do that there was just a lot of layers to the movie and I just had a really good time review like reviewing it with you love the awesome. characters great thriller all right what's your number Two or where were we at? Where were you at? I believe we're at three right now. Okay, that was my number three. What's your number three? Ooh, my number three is, and it's actually one of my favorite films from 2020. Okay. The Five Bloods. Oh, that is my number two. Oh, okay. I So The Five Bloods was my, one of my favorite movies of 2020 because it, it really felt like, Kind of like with everything else, it was definitely a fresh, uh, a, a fresh new take on 
kind of like the same old, same old, but it, it deviated in a way where it created its own. Like, it was definitely a fresh new take on war movies. And I remember, like, oh, the the main actor in it and having all these different type of characters that were not easy to predict and that all had a certain way about them and things like that. Like, um, I can't remember the actor's name, but yeah the one guy who essentially goes crazy um he floored me every time i saw this movie i cried every time because there's just this one scene and like and it's so crazy because i cried so hard um before chadwick boseman's death Mm -hmm. and so dude i sobbed even harder when i watched it after his death and it's during that scene where um, the actor who I'm talking about goes to Chadwick Boseman's character and he's just sobbing and crying. And he's like, hey, I forgive you. Like, oh, my God. Like, that just that is such a good movie and probably one of the best things 2020 has given us, in my opinion. Yeah, no, that was it's I I I love the movie because of the main actor. By the way, there's like a petition to get him an Oscar. I want to sign. Oh, of course, yeah. No, like, if he doesn't get a nomination, I'm boycotting the Oscars. I really like that each character represented something, too, from the war. One of them had a daughter he left behind. One of them had a failing, but, like, one of them PTSD. All these themes that they brought to the movie. I think you, especially for us, who is nowhere near that generation, has known not a lot of knowledge. We realize when we watch this movie of the Vietnam War, when you watch something like that, it's just very also, it, It's also something to, like, realize, like, and not to sound so righteous or anything, but really in reality to understand how our history and how we learned about wars and everything is really so whitewashed. It really is. When you, when you truly, look at a film like, like it, it truly is, and that kind of brought a lot of perspective and a lot of things that I realized, like, I kind of I missed out on from learning from you know learning about Vietnam learning about Korean War learning about that and only hearing it kind of from the white man's perspective was really crazy and and it was just something that it's like I never gave thought until I saw that movie so I was really happy that a movie like that was able to shine light on that while also shine light to relevant issues as well yeah it's it's very modern as well it's it doesn't how do I put this? It's not so much focused on the Vietnam War, but basically what happens 40 years later after the war. What happens Yeah, and it really just hi- it highlights the 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 trait that when people go into war, most of them never leave. Yeah. They can go back home, they can go back to their normal lives, their normal jobs, whatever it may be, but they never leave the war. And I, it's just, if you have not seen it yet, highly, highly recommend it. And it really is one of those things where if it does not get some Golden Globe Oscar nomination or anything, I will literally just like during nominations, get up, leave the room, and I will be making a tweet about it or something. (laughs) And I never tweet. But that is just like, I'm going to be having some type of release where I'm going to be upset if it doesn't get a writing credit at least. And if um, the actor who we were talking about, or even Chadwick, oh my God, Chadwick, even if um, uh, if they don't get any of those nominations, I will be upset. Definitely. I, I think this movie just tells us that we need to learn more about what happens to these people after fighting. Because Yeah, like, and I think we definitely, know. instead of remaking kind of like the same, like, for example, I put 1917. I like 1917. Why? Because it is from a different war that's not necessarily talked about a lot as well as from not an American perspective, but an English perspective, which is not something we typically see a lot. And also, 1970 has a lot of heart to it because it's not about the war. It's about yeah. the story within the war. Yeah. So so I, yeah. I just think that more films, like, because I'm, I'm totally a fan of war films. I do like war films. I do think that there's a lot of, whether it's based off a true story or completely made up, I think you have a lot of, play like a lot of like a playroom with everything with characters with settings everything but i think we just need to expand from war films centering around you know the white man going to vietnam or the white man going wherever i think it needs to be a little bit more diverse than that well, really for just sure the american perspective because the five bloods also yeah they're american but we learn about what happened to the vietnamese people as well after yeah. the war so i think in general, it would be good to get 
just diversity in war movies. Talk about what happened in those countries after the war. What happened to those people? What, what Absolutely. did we do, you know? So Absolutely. Um, so that was my number three. Um, what was your number three again? My number the woman next door yeah and that was the five loves was the number two okay my number two is once again i said i like a good war movie come and see come and see that was a great movie but i could never watch it again because it undid like three months of therapy (laughs) i was so that movie is a visual and emotional experience everyone it's a nightmare it is like in reality that is a nightmare of a movie but once again it painted a whole new perspective like i would have never known that during world war ii that obviously we all knew the the nazis were kind of an ass (laughs) but like i we it was just like we always like we're always taught like oh they had issues with the jews and blah 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 but we never really got to hear as, at least from my perspective growing up, the sheer recklessness, the insanity, the everything that has been represented by Come and See. Totally, like, it's a hard to swallow movie. Without no, and, a doubt, very hard to watch. But I, the movie is, again, another unique perspective from a child that has to, that ages miserably in the movie. And has this immense guilt. Like you watch a child pretty much deteriorate mentally the whole time. And yeah, it's you, not you, something you, you literally see. see within a two hour movie the entire innocence and all that is left good of a child being stripped away from him. And it's crazy. It, and I think also one of where this movie also like it's it's just such good writing. It's just such good directing. But I think also where this movie shines is how they actually made this young, youthful 14-year-old boy at the end of the film completely look like a 60-year-old war veteran. Yeah. Insane. It's an an incredible movie. And and there's just so much. There's a lot to it. And it's very it's very fast paced for the amount of intensity that you are hit with time after time. And it's really, really good. Like I said, that's definitely like, if you like 1917, yes, I recommend it. But if you thought 1917 was a intense or hard to watch film, you're going to struggle with come and see. It's not for the faint hearted. Absolutely not. And it's not necessarily in a sense where it's like extremely gory or any, it's just, it's the most from what I've seen and what I've people have said, it's one of the most realistic films about the horror of war. Yeah. So that's my number two because it, I, I love a good shock factor. I love a good shock factor. I love a good impact film. And I definitely think this is one of them. So if that's my number two, um, Savannah, what is your number one film? So the, my favorite one we reviewed, and I'm going to explain this. I'm going to explain it. It's Parasite. Shocker. But I'm going to explain it. Okay. I saw Parasite October of 2019. Mm-hmm. And I think every so often you have this experience with the movie that like, not changes, but like reiterates why you go to the movies. Yeah. And Parasite was the reason. And mm-hmm. still the reason why I think movie theaters are important and why I do this. Absolutely. I remember seeing, I wasn't able to see Parasite in theaters because that was at the time when COVID hit. Um, do I remember it? Because it really, co- like Parasite, I totally agree. I sh- it, that definitely goes into my honorable mentions. And I just watched it recently too. And I just, I showed my my boyfriend that film. And it was, it's just one of those things where films like that come maybe once every 20 years. You know, a film like that. And it's so unique, so original, but it's definitely a huge, like that, that film made an impact on the entire movie field. 
into cinematic history. That movie made an impact. So I totally, and I think also it, it brought a lot, like, because here's the thing, it opened up a new window because now we have people exploring foreign films now oh, and exploring um, cinema because of Parasite. So I totally think that is sound, that Parasite does deserve a number one spot. I completely agree. Uh, yeah, and, and also, I, I, so we can get into this a little bit later, but it's also the reason I'm not, you know what, we'll talk about it after. Let's get to okay, your one. This, this, that's a different topic in itself. But basically Dude. the topic is that's personally why I'm not for streaming new movies at home. Ooh. If there was oh, yeah. We're going to get into this after I tell my number one. Yes. Okay. Yes. So The Woman Next Door is I, my number one movie. Totally understand it. Totally get it. Yep. Was it, it was something I wasn't expecting. And you have to realize, I'm not a huge fan of romance movies. I'm not. But there is just something, like I said before, something about this movie. And I think also a lot of times, not to sound narcissistic or anything, a lot of times when I look at a movie, I think movies are good when they take the same turns and takes that I would make if I was directing the movie as vain as that sounds that's just oh, what I think that's like sweet. identifying with the you know yeah and I think that's why like a lot of my favorite movies are ones that I identify with and the woman next door is oh, just a masterpiece it's so and I think also it means so much more to me that no one knows about it but we rave about it we rave about it, but like no one, it's only you and me. I don't know anyone else who is like, oh my God, yeah, you know? I don't even know anyone who's like, oh, Gerard Depardieu. Like, I don't know <laughs> people like that. So to review The Woman Next Door, get a whole glimpse of a, because I've been familiar with like French New Wave and things like that, but to get a glimpse into like, ooh, like it, it's not all about the French New Wave. We got to talk about 80s French films because they were killing it with Gerard Depardieu. He's beautiful. Fantastic. Great actor. There's something about him, you know? There is something about him. There is something. It, yeah, like, he looks like Zach. He looks like a French Zach. You know? <laughs> so it's about him. <laughs> that always happens. I always like actors who just look like variants or different fonts of my boyfriend. And there's a lot. We discovered a lot. Yeah, there's quite a few. That would that that's an honorable mention. <laughs> My boyfriend Zach just looking like a bunch of celebrities is quite the honorable mention. But I think um the the woman next door is really just it's been something that like when I think about, I don't go like, oh yeah, you should watch this movie. I go, oh my god, you haven't seen it? Like it's just it's one of those movies for me. And I highly, highly recommend it for those who have seen it and want to know more about what we think about the specifics, the acting and things like that. Highly recommend you check out all those episodes. Um, just go on Audemic Media and just look for the ones that you missed or whatever. Just, yeah. just check it out. But now I want to talk to you. So you got beef with like people like Warner Brothers going, oh, I'm just going to stream my stuff. Okay. Right. Wait, here's the thing. I'm not advocating for everybody to go to the movies right now. I understand yeah. it's not safe. I'm not in any way encouraging anybody to go to the movie theaters. I'm not. However, there's two reasons why I'm not the biggest fan. Do I understand why they did it? Uh, absolutely. And I think mm -hmm. at this point in time, it's just safer for people to be home. And if yeah. it helps the industry, it helps the industry. But in general, I'm not for it. I am a big believer in going to the movie theaters. I think so. You're not for it. I just want to clarify. You're not for it in the long run. Yeah, I, yeah. Right now, I think for the next year and maybe two years, they got to do what they got to do. Yeah. However, in the long run, for two reasons specifically, for two reasons. One, personal feeling. I think you got a different experience in the theater, and you experience the movie differently than on TV, than in your home. There is just something yeah. about having all your focus in that theater. It's dark. It's, it's an experience. You're immersed. We're at home. I don't know about everybody else, but for me, I'm distracted. I have a very different experience in the theater than I do at home. 
Yeah. Um, so in terms of that, I just think I maybe it's selfish, but I'm going to experience movies a lot differently than I would have by going to the theater. For example, I can't imagine watching a movie like The Lighthouse on my TV for the first time. Oh my god, that was <sighs> your lobster. Oh my god, that was an experience. That's what I'm saying. Could you imagine seeing that in the house? We'd be just pausing every five minutes, like what? What is going on? But in the theater, yeah, it's and, and like, and I, I agree with you. I do agree. I do agree for the sake of COVID. That yeah, I understand why we have to. You know, we have to adapt. It, it is what it is. It is what it is. I do, however, think that in conjunction, what should be just to give movie theaters some fighting chance of staying open during these times, I think that I hope, and I'm not too sure, I know that they're doing streaming, but I hope they at least do both movie theater and streaming, because you know what? There's some dude who already got COVID, who's not afraid of getting it and stuff, who already had COVID and beat it, not going there willy-nilly knowing he has COVID. But if some dude wants to go in and watch a movie, he's like, hey, I already had COVID, I'm good, blah, 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 like, whatever to each their own but you're keeping those businesses afloat so that's fine Um, I think that's what they might be doing that's not why I'm totally because I think they're also giving the theaters because Wonder Woman is out in theaters so I'm what I think it's like a dual thing gotcha um Um, I'll make this short so glad I did not waste the money to go see that in theaters um I saw it did not like it quick review Wonder Woman disappointed goodbye that's the review (laughs) um (laughs) Dude, that movie's getting smoked. Nobody liked it. I feel bad. Look, okay, so the only other thing I'll say about this movie is, like, did we really need, like, look, we were just talking about anemia, right? Did we really need a cheetah to look like they were suffering from thalassemia, too? Like, I get it. (laughs) Representation. But it was just grotesque. Just the trailer looked odd. And, and then, dude, they, was they did one. They did one dude. This one handsome dude. His literally, his name is handsome guy. They did this man so dirty. I'm so dirty. They did this man, this actor, and his career so dirty. Damn, why, dude? Because Chris Pine is back by a miracle, and he's like, oh, he died. I'm not really. So. What oh, spoiler they alert! Weird, I don't know. They did some weird stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna you call it what right. They did, because she was like, "Who are you?" And then Chris Pine's like, "I'm me," but it's not Chris Pine talking. It's some handsome guy. And she's like, That's- "No, you're not." And then he goes, "No, it is me." And then he transforms, and she goes, "Oh my god, it is you! I recognize you." Meanwhile, so you're telling me that this poor dude, this poor good-looking guy, is going to be now known as the guy who wasn't good-looking enough to be Chris Pine. I don't like that. Because he shows up, he's like, hey, it's me. And she sees the handsome guy and she's like, no, it's not. And then she turns around again and it's Chris Pine. And she goes, oh my God, it is you. And completely just, here's the thing. If that was done to a woman, we'd be screaming. (laughs) So I'm so sorry that they did this. Literally the name, they didn't even give the guy a name. It's just handsome man? Handsome man. I don't really, but from what you're telling me, I don't like how it sounds. No. That's weird. They did some weird stuff. You want to see a good superhero movie, go back to a little ditty called Chronicle, because that is the only good superhero movie. If you don't like it, come at me. <laughs> That's a fight. Um, but I totally uh, agree with your whole statement on um, yeah. movie theaters and stuff like that it, yeah it is an experience dude how many times have we because there's different levels of movies experience right there's watching a movie you know that you maybe already seen or something that like you didn't get a chance to see in theaters and stuff that's one level that's that's your little at home little snuggle session and then you go into all right gonna watch a regular movie but then people are forgetting that there are levels eons above just going to a normal ass movie theater and watching a movie i'm talking about going big brain energy and going into the dine-in movies those are an experience oh sinopolis sinopolis i miss sinopolis my nirvana with the milkshakes you joking no look i have never more willing paid for a seven dollars for a milkshake it was and i do it again every time delicious look there are some movies that i understand look for people with kids 
I get it. You don't want to bring your screaming children. We don't want you to bring your school. Like there are certain circumstances no. why, why I think people will like staying at home and watching the the new Pixar movie, for example. The only other reason I'm I'm not for it is because I personally don't think movie theaters will ever go away. But I I do what I could see happening is, and I, I heard this from a commentator. I don't remember if it was a uh, Chris Stockman. Somebody mentioned that movie theaters could be more of a like luxury like it could be more of like um going to like a special it, it, it doesn't have to be such a casual kind of like because, mini golf yeah like a special thing because there's <laughs> just sorry gonna, that, i just realized how dumb i sounded like no, mini I, golf. but i understand what you're saying because like <laughs> i'm trying to explain like it's it could just be a luxury because there are so many theaters going out of business, especially the small theaters. And even yeah. though you and me are lucky to be in a tourist area to where, like, most likely our movie theaters are going to stay open. But you go somewhere Yeah, because like- no one wants to stay indoors because, dude, there's, I, there's something in our water that makes everyone antsy. And they're just like, I want to go to Disney during a pandemic. I'm all... Dude... <laughs> <laughs> to those who are like traveling here like please reconsider because we are not doing great just don't don't get on a plane and go on vacation but anyway just an opinion just a thought i am just saying that look amc has some great options you can rent your own theater now for a hundred bucks super cool you don't have fantastic to, that's a safe option you mm-hmm. know there there's a lot of options and even though that's a bit pricey, to keep movie theaters going. I just don't want to see movie theaters. I was the type of person before this to happen. I was going to the movies like two, three times a week. It was like yeah. my favorite thing to do. It's my me time. I'd go by myself when I was in Puerto Rico. Only thing I wanted to do, only thing I could really do was go to the movies. I don't mm-hmm. want the movie theaters to go away and the ones still standing to be this luxury thing to be like an, yeah and then you also have to realize house. like maybe because it's more of a luxury thing maybe like the theaters that we're used to are going are no longer going to carry like certain movies that we might want to see like for example um i always loved one of my favorite things going to the movies is not only seeing new movies i'm very particular when it comes to seeing new movies but what i absolutely loved was being able to do like see the retro movies see the flashback movies and things like that like one of my favorite like more recent experiences in the theater was like from like a year ago where you me my boyfriend and I think a few other maybe it was just us three um I'm not sure if your husband was there or not but probably not I think it was in PR but anyways um when we saw a clockwork orange oh, in a dining like- theater and we're just all sitting together in like these bomb recliners you know sipping our little milky shakes and i'm ordering like oh god what was it what do i always used to get you I get, always used to get asian tacos and the little green beans what are they called edamame yeah, like what was like your- serve that like that was an experience i can't i couldn't make it in my own home but not as good like no, that was no. an experience for me and I, I really do miss those experiences because you know what? Like those are sadly one of the very few things, especially in where we live, where we could spend like $30 and have a good time. And that's so crazy to say too. I mean, I'm happy that, look, I understand there's a pandemic going on and I'm not telling everybody to go to the theaters because that's that's not a good idea. It's like, you, know, you all go to the theaters. However- I think the reason movie theaters have been, like, getting by is because I see a lot of them doing, like, the classic movies for $5. Which, yeah. Oops, nothing sorry. wrong with I that. Don't hit something. It's okay. Yeah, no, I think that's how most of them are actually, like, staying afloat because I see the movie theaters by me are always playing old movies because nothing's out. And, hey, that's yeah. fine. And it, it always like one of my like traditions that I had to miss out this year was typically at my local theater when they play like the retro movies. Oh, dude! Oh man, they I miss Big Trouble in Little China. That was a fun time when we went. We did go in the movies and see it there. I have our ticket. We went. Like, why did I think ago. that I didn't go? 
you went three years ago with me, I remember. At a uh, okay. theater wow. by you. Okay. I don't know why. I thought it was this year. I think, no, they were showing it again this year and I couldn't make it to that. But I also couldn't make it to Psycho because we've seen uh. Psycho before. And I used to see it with my friend Miranda all the time. Um, and, and it was one of those things where it's like, my friend Miranda is very sick for people who don't know. Um, my friend Miranda is very, very sick and she can't go out to the movies and stuff like that. So it, I, I still continued the tradition, you know, of going to, and I would like remember her and wish yeah, she would be yeah. there and things like that. So it's like things like that, like those experiences and stuff like that means so much more than just sitting in your home and watching movies and stuff. I do like the fact that Yes, during a pandemic, during like some of our gloomiest days, we do have access to good movies, especially like, dude, HBO Max came um, in clutch this year. They're killing it. They're killing, killing it. it without but a I, doubt, bringing I, good content and not things like freaking cuties, <laughs> you know, but I, I just $15, I cry. Mm-hmm. I cry. $15 is so much, but you know what? Pay it. Because they're worth it. I, again, I'm not against, like, the whole streaming movies during this time. I understand. You just hope it doesn't become a permanent solution. I I don't want it to be. I think we, we did a good job at even, you know, we had this technology for a long time. People could just Mm -hmm. do stream stuff at their home for, like, what, the last five, six years? And that'd be it. But movie theaters weren't and maybe I don't know but so much affected every time I've gone to a movie theater before the pandemic on like a Friday night it's packed so yeah I really just hope this pandemic you know once it's all over whenever it's over doesn't set off this new trend and movie theaters don't suffer for it because I think yeah. it's just important for a lot of reasons and especially for people like you and me mm-hmm yeah, I, 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 I really can't wait till the day where it's like you and me, uh, whether mask on, mask off, you know, I'm not going to be picky about it. Where you and me and maybe Zach and your mans and everything like oh, that, we, we can all just go outing. together yeah. and just, yeah, and, and just enjoy e- each other's company in a movie theater, you know? I think also, like, there's something, like, you, you kind of zone in and focus in in movie theaters because, you know what, if you look at your phone, eventually someone's going to go, hey, get off. Your light is so freaking bright, you know? Like, yeah. there's a lot of things, like, you're kind of, like, forced, but in, like, a good way. It's kind of like, all right, like, I'm I'm set and primed and proper to watch this movie. So I really do, I really do miss those experiences, but Sadly, with COVID and things like that, and with my uh, weakened immune system, it's sadly not a risk that is worthy of taking right now. Yeah, understandable. I just, when HBO Max came out with that uh, statement that they're going to do that with Warner Brothers, it's just very mixed feelings, you know, because yeah, I'm, it's like, I'm ooh, yeah, like for... this is good for a year, but if they're doing this every year, it's going to be an issue. And I'm luckily only long term like straight right now I know for sure it's only a one year contract. Uh, I hope so because I'm not for because let's face it not everybody thinks the way we do. Some people are going to be of like course. oh I don't have to go out I don't have to pay like why not you know so of yeah. course. But you know what I think this was an excellent 2020 recap. Um I can't Yay. wait for everyone who listens, everyone who has supported us. Um, shout out to, once again, Sensei David and also Homeboy James for being there for us for this year as we set off our adventure with Purple Noon and everything. We appreciate and we appreciate everyone who listens. It does really? mean a lot to us that like, hey, people want to hear like because we're the only two people like that we know that like to talk movies and hear about stuff like this. So it's really nice that we get to share our opinions and share conversations with you guys and everyone else who listens. Um, We still have a Patreon. I've mentioned this before. Um, Just to kind of help us out, I started a dollar Patreon a month where literally you sign up, there's 30 seats. And if you sign up for it, it's a dollar a month. And every episode, kind of like how Sensei David and Homeboy James get a shout out, um yeah you can get a shout out every single episode for as long as you're a patreon member so please consider that option um and yeah thank 
everyone so much for listening to us, for making 2020, even during everything, even during this shit storm, really, really fun. And of course, Savannah, oh, I hit my knuckle. Um, Savannah, Oof. thank you so much for being an excellent, excellent co-host with me and just making this a reality because I was not expecting this to happen going in through, you know, starting out 2020. But I'm really happy it did happen. So thank you so much, Savannah, for being here with me. Yeah, you're my best friend. <laughs> That's it. Um, is there anything else you would like to say, Savannah, before we sign off? I mean, I think you said everything. But yeah, thanks for listening, guys. I know we're just a bunch of nerds. females talking about movies. A bunch of lady nerds. Lady nerds. But, <laughs> you know, it's nice to know there are more of us like that. And please subscribe. We see you watching. We know you're watching. Just subscribe. Hey, yeah, I'm getting a lot of traffic through YouTube, but not through my (laughs) subscriber count. It's free. Damn it. (laughs) It's free. Go for it. Thank you guys so much for listening. And um, I believe. Yeah. Well, actually, no, this comes out already during the new year. So happy new year. Oh, 2021. Um, Hope your new year is excellent. And the next time you'll see us, we'll be talking about Arch Enemy. And then what? We'll most likely get into Tenet. I assume that's going to be changed on the list, correct? Yes. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much. Bye. Bye.